We are with Yuriki of the 69 Eyes, Noise from the Pit. Uh, define Gothic rock in your own words. Uh, it's rock and roll might has its flavors that flirt with death, uh, dangerous romance, and nighttime activities. Okay. How about that? And that, that works for me, man. I don't know if you have any more backstory behind that or... No, I just like, like it's, it's, um, like uh, as the 69 noise have been called as a Gothic band or Gothic rock band, uh, like, uh, in Finland we're a mainstream rock band. So sometimes as they label as goths, that probably, you know, like that might even scare some people off. And, and actually I, I, sometimes you get messages like I'm not dressing up in black and I come to see your shows and things like this, but I mean. We're as much goth as we are glam. If you don't know any of those words, but you love rock and roll, you're always welcome. It doesn't matter. Well said, well said. Uh, can we get into your early life growing up in Finland, and did that have any influence on you wanting to pursue, pursue music at all? Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I was looking uh, to the West all my life which means like us, we, we are here in the very last east east country here in Europe or Nordic, uh, North Europe. And uh, I was looking for a West all the time. My first toy was Mickey Mouse. And my second toy was Donald Duck. So those were my first friends. And then when I came, I grew up and, and, and I was eight years old, I saw um, Elvis Presley's funeral on TV. So, you know, the rest is the same. I mean, we're still on the same path. I was, I was still like, uh, um, and still I am, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of American pop culture and, uh, namely rock and roll when I was, uh, you know, when I was early teen, uh, even earlier, earlier than that, like I said, I saw Elvis Presley's funeral as I was like, uh, eight years old. So, you know, rock and roll was answer for everything that I was looking for my, for my life since I was eight years old and the, uh, later on it took a while some over 10 years from that eight being eight years and then later like uh, 1920 and starting a rock and roll band and you know now I'm uh, 54 years old I still love Mickey Mouse Donald Duck uh, American pop culture Elvis rock and roll I'm on the same path but now I'm like I think I'm more like on the other side of, I'm on the creative side I, I like to stay on the consumer side as well as a fan boy, but you know, you, I've been saying that I'm a fan boy also like a couple of decades. So maybe it's time to grow up from that. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not that much of a boy anymore as well, but you know, uh, I, 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 my roots are there, Mickey Mouse and rock, early rock and roll, uh, whatever we are doing with the 69 eyes my gothic glam rock and roll band that is based on those simple facts and if you look at us look, listen to our music you it's it's i think it's very clear those are the main elements mickey mouse and elvis i appreciate that history lesson uh, what yeah I, I, kept, I kept it very simple i kept it very simple right no but it was good well said <laughs> Uh, so what would you say, uh, what specific musicians still influence you this, to this very day? Uh, well, it's like, like I, I would like, obviously I was inspired by different, like Elvis was there in the beginning when I was a teenager, I discovered the doors and, and Jim Morrison's thoughts, like everybody probably is doing at a certain point of their age. Uh, till now today, uh, these artists that I just mentioned inspire me, but there's obviously the list is pretty vast. Uh, I would say, um, like, uh, still, but let's, let's, like, I remember there was a time when I, at, at my youth, uh, young people who were into rock and roll or maybe even sports or 
or, or movie stars put the posters on their walls of, of their heroes. And at some point when I was still living at home, my mother was asking why, why all these people in my, in my, in my bedroom, uh, on my posters were dead people. Why, why you just, why you worship the dead, you know? And that was a relevant question back then. Obviously, I didn't take it because, you know, Elvis, Jim Morrison, James Dean, you know, those guys were the coolest. But leaving those um, guys who are not alone with us anymore aside, the old, there's a lot of really cool artists that uh, inspire me. For instance, from, from, the, from the, like, uh, 70s New York City punk rock, uh, Cheetah Crow, living legend, guitarist from Dead Boys, is still with us. And every time I hear something or see some clip of him playing his guitar, that really touches me deeply. So Cheetah Crow is an inspiration. And uh, keep it, keeping the list very short, uh, I, I um, saw quite recently American young band uh, Palais Royale. And uh, that, is a, that is a band that really inspired inspires me a lot, inspired the whole band, Hope 69 Eyes, with their, uh, you know, their fashion sense, their music, their thoughts, their approach to rock and roll as as new generation. So, you know, those things. And, and you know, as we were about to meet at the Sick New World Festival, I mean, seeing Cold Chamber, you know, returning on stage, playing, starting to play like they always play with their like a pretty primitive sound, their uh, th- their kind of rock and roll that was also inspiring. So these inspiring moments come and go, but they they are still there, and then they they encourage me to continue and still change my own dreams because all these guys who still are here with us, uh, they still chase the same dream, and rock and roll helps to get that dream closer. Thank you for that, man. That was another great answer. Wow. Uh, you know, you're even poetic to that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been creating music with the Six and I since 1989, maybe a little before. Uh, what inspires you to keep striving towards success after all these years? Well, like I already answered, I mean, I'm s- still chasing the dream. Uh, I, I think, like, when I first saw some artists, uh, on stage when I was a teenager, I, I had a sense that I know the same thing that those guys know. Or if I saw something from TV, uh, you know, like live performance of, of Doors or even Jimi Hendrix, I had a I had a idea in my mind, like, hey, I, I actually might know exactly what those guys know as well. So that was the idea of starting, you know, to, to becoming a guy in a rock and roll band. And, uh, uh, that that same idea, I think I ha- I I will I'm still delivering. I I have something inside me that this world needs, and I, and 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 you know at least our fans who follow our music need. But only I, also I think that there's some pure sincere thought that I haven't you know haven't got out of myself yet in the music of the sixteen hundreds. That will be important, crucial factor in the course of the humanity. Just only that. So you know, I I think that there's there's something something inside me that I'm I'm op- I'm I'm willing to share and I'm willing to create and put into our music and aesthetics and everything where I'm involved with. So you know, it's a sincere thought, and I think that's sort of like my reason to exist on this planet as well. Well said. Well said again. Uh... Let's go into the past a little bit. Uh, can you recall what occurred during the first the Six and Nine Eyes live show, and how that specific show was a learning experience for the whole band? I I I was a like big fan of like like very um, outrageous rock and roll, and I still I am of course uh, in the in the in the eighties when I was as uh, at my teens. And I, especially my favorite bands were like the Cramps or Lords of the New Church. And uh, if you know anything about those bands, if you don't know, please Google them. The Cramps, Lords of the New Church. So you will understand what I'm talking about. Google about pictures, videos, and, and all that kind of material. So I saw those two bands and I was, they, they really, 
uh, affected on me. And I, and I got an idea like, okay, if I've ever been in a band, this is how it should be. And, and if I'm, if I'm a singer, this is how it should be. It should be wild, uh, outrageous, uh, primitive, uh, and have the element of danger at the same time. So when we started to play the first shows, knew, nobody knew of our band anything. So we had to stand out somehow. So I think I can do that. So uh, I was the wild man without t-shirt, with a long hair, and I ran into the audience or, or, or uh, st stood on the tables of the club uh, in front of people and sang and sort of like, uh, you know, like, uh, like I was like, um, like a wild man should be a caveman, uh, come to a live on stage. And, and, you know, like I was, uh, I was preaching the primitive, uh, you know, like, uh, the primitive, uh, you know, the primitive prayers of rock and roll. And that was, I was thinking, thinking and that, that I, what I was doing, obviously over the years, uh, we all we we learned to write songs. Our songs were played on the radio, so I tamed down quite a bit. But quite recently, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I saw this kind of new band, uh, Palais Royale, and then all of a sudden they were doing exactly the same thing that I was doing, like uh, some nearly thirty-five years ago. Uh, a singer without a shirt, uh, going to the audience to sing. Uh, getting wild with the crowd so I, that actually inspired me that I'm actually going through the same rituals that I did when we started so uh, I'm back on the square one in a positive and good way I got my mojo back and that's because of this like this new generation of rockers that I inspired and, and made me to realize that what I once had I still got it and I'm, I will use it in the same way so I'm preaching you know uh the psalms of rock and roll, gospel of rock and roll, you know, like I, I used to. And I, I did that earlier on, but I, of course there was, there was, we've been through decades. Decades are different. Now it's time to get back to where it all started for us. And, you know, there are new people just discovering your music, attending Sick New World. Uh, for those who just discover your music at Sick New World or, you know, even just now, uh, which three albums from your back catalog would you recommend and why? Um, I would start with the new album, of course, Death of Darkness, uh, because that's like most, uh, that's more appealing to this time because it's just, we just, it's brand new. So I think we're, we're like, at, at some times, as we've been playing three decades, you know, you're, you're never, uh, we're never trendy. We're, we're never, you know, in sync with the time. And it doesn't matter. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not, but it doesn't matter in the long run. But now, right now, I think what I've read, what the, the other people say, and you nearly said, uh, like as we played at the at the Sick New, World, New World Festival and a lot of young audience uh, saw us, I think we're pretty much in sync at the time right now. The, 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 those things that we are always being into are pretty much like uh, valued and happening at the moment. So the latest album, uh, Death of Darkness, just because it's now. And then other records, I would say, um, Devils, which came out like uh, 2005. Uh, that has our most um, like uh, famous song, Lost Boys. And it has like a uh, like bunch of other tracks, which are which we still are playing, which are the most famous tracks of ours. And The Devils was that record. And then, uh, like, let's say uh, more, like even earlier record, which came out, came out at uh, year 2000, that's the album called Blessed Be. And that has songs like uh, uh, Gothic Girl, Brandon Lee, those kind of songs, which I've seen quite recently being used, uh, like in TikTok for new generations doing you know i don't know whatever they are doing dressing up or or just having fun so those two records blessed be from year 2000 uh bills from year 2005 and uh it can't be 2004 i don't remember and then death of darkness which is from year 2024 i'm uh, sorry 23 
Yeah. But you know, somebody might listen to this, like who knows when, you know, maybe in after 10 years, but still, you know, and those years doesn't matter, but I, I don't know why I said that. It's, it's horrible that when we played this long and we're done so many records, I, I, I sort of like, uh, tried to, trying to wipe that away every time. I, I wish just to tell that we have a new album out. We have, a, we have some, some songs that people might know from our, you know, from, from our, in our past. I want to stay current. I want to live the moment. I, I'm looking forward, forward to the future all the time. You know, next year is your is the 69i's 35th anniversary. Are there any big plans? Horrible. I haven't even thought about that. Uh, thanks for telling me. I have no idea. Uh, uh, where we're just uh, which I think we're just going getting more crazier. It's time for it. I mean, we we are we're there like um, there like a lot, a lot of our contemporaries and and our friends band have gone. It's, large amount of really cool rock and roll people of our friends are unfortunately no longer with us as well. So, you know, we, we keep the flag flying and uh, we are doing this just to, you know, to respect and honor those rock and roll friends of ours who couldn't be here any longer, but we're, fl- we're keeping the flag flying and the freak flag flying, I would say. And, uh, you know, which is continuing to be ourselves, the 69 eyes. Are there any notable behind the scenes story you'd like to share upon recording your latest LP, Death and Darkness? Uh, any, excuse me, any, any notable or any, you know, notable. Ah, uh, yes. Well, yeah. Um, well, one of the things was like, um, like there's a, there's a title track, Death of Darkness, uh, you know, on the album, there's the same track, which is called Death of Darkness, and that's a title track. And that's a beautiful ballad. Uh, that is, uh, we had a co-writer there with us, uh, Ben Cristo from Sisters of Mercy, the lead guitarist uh, from Sisters for, for a couple of decades already. And uh, it's a fantastic song. And then there was a part, there's a couple of interesting parts in that song. Um, and, and people have been wondering what, what what's going on in that. So... There's a part that I sing black metal vocals, and uh, and uh, it, it's a part like uh, uh, it's a funeral, we are going, to... and and I sing that live and I just sang it. I didn't even press any buttons. Or, uh, it didn't come from any tapes, and uh, I just like uh, just fit it there, and I think it's beautiful. You know, same way as if you uh, listen to remember don't. Those who remember when Dimo Borgir released their Morning Palace album and the title track starts to play. And it's actually beautiful, the music. So I, I sort of had in my mind that those black metal vocals of mine are beautiful in that song and they, they, they fit there. And that's that's just me. And I'm, 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 I'm super stoked to do it live as well. So people have been wondering who's that. But I mean, uh, earlier record we did, we outsourced black metal vocals to... Donny Filth from Cradle of Filth, and uh, oh, this time, it, 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 yeah, he, he's he's on our earlier album, just being as a feature singer, uh, singing black metal vocals in his style. But those in this song that I'm talking about, they are they are done by me. And uh, also, there's a high part in that song, uh, in the same song, and uh, I sing it, uh, I sang it on the demo tape, and uh, I thought that it's 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 a part. Uh, it's a similar kind of part which sings like uh, there's a funeral we are going to but much higher and a uh, higher note. Um, so I was thinking that that's kind of King Diamond-ish vocals would be all in that part. So uh, the best King Diamond uh, vocalist out of being King Diamond himself is Villa Valo from him. Uh, I saw first time I ever see him on stage was like when he was performing uh, in a in a King Diamond uh, tribute band here in Helsinki, and that was first time I ever saw the guy. Obviously, didn't recognize he he had a coarse paint face, uh, black cylinder, and uh, and a, and a bone crust with microphone and singing exactly like King Diamond. I was like, wow, somebody can do that here. So I was thinking like, all right, now it's time for his uh, King Diamond vocals, but unfortunately. He wasn't 
available doing his own album at the moment so we couldn't have him him doing that and then literally him doing that you know playing with words here and then then i thought that okay you know next next best satanic vocals or as equal let's say equal satanic vocals uh, has a uh, um tobias forge uh from the ghost i asked he even asked him come along but he 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 was also all, all of them replied that he was also busy with his stuff so you know in the end there's uh there's my my demo vocals and also like uh good old trusty uh Artie cruz from santa cruz who's a brilliant singer not only just a brilliant x-man he's higher than five vocals are there so you know long story very uh short story very long in this case but that's something well you know it's just like making records is fun and then you know like uh getting your friends involved and uh have good times with the songs that's how the 69 has, has always been doing our records well said again uh which track from death and darkness where you say it became the most personal for you to write lyrics for and why Oh, um, I, I wrote the songs, we, we wrote the songs for singles, just like songs that happen in the radio. So, you know, it was like a different kind of mindset every time, uh, everything, every, something was, was written. Um, uh, I think once again, I just returned to the title track because, uh, it has some eerie, I machine kind of wide there because it's sort of every time we play it live, uh, it sort of reminds me like literally I get like uh it, it whisks me back in time to year 2001, 2002, uh, uh, those days when, when, when our music was other, our then stones, uh, from those days are pretty, pretty much like same sounding as this title track. So. It's kind of time machine, and I can sense that it's also time machine for for the audience. I can see them uh, how how it reacts, how the song you know touches them. At least I, I think so. So you know, like uh, that song is uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's it's very um, I think it's it's impressive so and remarkable song in that that sense that it it, it touches like of obviously me like every song we're doing and we'll be writing and recording is obviously touches us because we've done them and they have special meaning for us and mostly always the lyrics have something of my life straight up there and uh, no use telling all everything and opening up every secret but they, they are there the real stories behind the lyrics uh, and on this song is just like a, it's just something it's just like i'm looking through mirror uh to 20 years back way or another and 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 I'm and and it differs every time what I see there but it's like a mirror that I can walk through back 20 years and walk back and you know which song from death and darkness were you looking forward to debut live for the first time well you can imagine that I would answer this murder takes two and that's the song we we're not playing live uh, it's a duet with uh Kat von D that would be brilliant to do at some, some, some point. It will. It. I'm sure it will happen. I won't. I won't say anything yet. But at some moment, it will happen. And uh, uh, I'm waiting, looking forward to that moment. That would be like a pure joy to share stage with her. I hope that happens, brother. It will. It will happen. Yeah, really. all, 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 all the dreams come true in the end. So we, if, 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 if we if we if we manage to, you know, to hold hold the song, that's not sin, but at least the pictures will be really cool. And would you say you're completely satisfied with the final outcome of what fully became the Death of Darkness LP? Uh well, I, I I would say it's our best record at this point. But I'm starting to get the hangover from, you know, releasing the new album. It's now. Uh, I think it's now it is exactly like a month old right now. So, what happens to the album when it's released these days? That's kind of like uh, I'm trying to uh, 
accept that, that the records died pretty fast. The singles don't die, but the, the whole albums died pretty fast. Uh, I'm excited to see what fans will discover from there. Will they, will fans make like fan videos of, of, of songs that haven't been, you know, released as singles and what kind of feedback there still waits, waits for me from, from that album. That remains to be seen because, and we're just continue playing all summer. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, uh, and I think there's still a bunch of people who are probably listening to this and they're like, oh, I haven't had time to check out that album yet. So I hope that at some point when they have time, they will, you know, you know, leave, leave their worries and daily lives behind and, you know, enjoy Death of Darkness. Uh, and your thoughts on Sick New World as a whole? Uh, it's the best festival I've ever been. It was so inspiring. Uh, the lineup, uh, seeing the artists, meeting old friends, making new friends, the whole lineup, where it was held, it was so stylistic, you know, everything. And, and everything was, you know, like, we loved it every every fucking second. And I, I wish that we could do more American festivals this summer. Uh, our agent is just currently studying that case but at least we 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 would love to be present at the you know stick new world if there comes another one next year or cruel world all these festivals they, they i think our band is at our best at the festivals uh you know especially for people who haven't have seen us yet or haven't had time to come to see us when we are playing uh saloon next to them in the, in the u.s so that was fantastic that was that was like that was the ultimate I, I one thing i regret i didn't buy or get i rather buy the, the festival t-shirt because that was there was many of them that, that was really cool i saw them everybody was wearing them in las vegas next couple of days which now tells that i stayed in las vegas next couple of days after the festival and that's another chapter and that's another story as well. I didn't get married, though. I didn't get married. I didn't get married. Uh, I think you'll be able to find one online. I'm sure they'll release something, you know, from the official website of Sick New World. Uh, briefly, uh, what do you hope to accomplish as a musician within the next five to ten years? Um, I'm ready to take uh, next step to the next level. I'm ready to uh, d deliver... Uh, music that that touches everybody and uh, not just cult audience i think the 16 eyes has potential to appear to a lar larger audience because of our you know like open rock and roll values which are open to everybody you don't have to be part of any genre or you know represent any subculture we're open rock and roll band to everybody uh and uh I'm I'm just waiting for the right moment to deliver a piece of music that will, you know, take us there and introduce us to those who don't know about us yet. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, Yerky. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, uh, hopefully we get to cross paths again. Great to catch, catch up finally and I uh, hope to see you next time, man. Yeah, yeah, because that that sick new world festival. Yeah, you're right. It was it was like Woodstock '99 without the chaos. <laughs> it was, it was, it was just like I think there was even that amount of people, you know, close to that. Because uh, if there was eighty thousand sold out, you know, music fans at, as a festival, there was like twenty thousand of like artists, their friends, VIPs, and so on. I I would say there was hundred thousand people, you know. So that was, that was, uh, unfortunately, Chad, we need to meet, but now we met. So it was really important for me. We'll cross paths, man. Thank you again, man. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate you. I'll keep you posted on everything. Yes. Goth bless. You too, man. Take care.